Mauricio Barahona, and we're here to talk about the PHFA Online Annual Supportive Services Reporting. Before we go any further, I want to make two suggestions for you to get the most out of this video. First, make sure you have your sign-in credentials so that you can easily sign in and follow along. And second, if you haven't already done so, I highly recommend going to our website and printing out the reporting instruction to follow along. I will also be referencing them during this video. A couple key facts to remember about our reporting. Annual reporting is due January 31st for the prior year. So on January 31st, 2020, your report for the entire 2019 calendar year is due. And this reporting is required by all agency finance properties. All right, let's get started. First, you need to go to our website, www.phfa.org. In the upper right, select Partners. Next, select Multifamily Login from the drop-down menu. Under Menu, select Sign In. You'll see three boxes. Here is where you'll input the login information I mentioned at the very beginning. You'll need the information for each box. Owner ID, a three-digit number designated for a specific property owner and assigned to the online reporting administrator. Username assigned by the administrator and should be a 7 to 15 character single word which will be case sensitive. Password must be 6 to 10 characters long. Upon the initial login a temporary password will be assigned to you. Okay now we're logged in. We need access to the system. Select supportive services in the upper left corner. Your name should be displayed across the top of the screen in blue. Where property is listed, choose select, then select your property. Now it's time to enter the actual data. The first thing you need to do is to make sure you have the proper compliance you're selected. Select new. This is only done when creating a report for the first time in the compliance year. Next, select add service. Next to type of service, press the arrow to expand a drop-down menu with the service categories. Type of service definitions are on page 5 and 6. For the service coordination category, the total number of hours that a service coordinator or property manager providing service coordination is scheduled for the property should be put in the reporting system as a single entry. The service provided for the category should include everything that was done and put in the text field. If more space is needed, use the empty field box at the bottom of the reporting system. In the field next to service provider, type in the organization or group that provided the service. This should never be a personal name. If a resident or resident association provides the service, use resident or resident association as the service provider, not the individual's name. This means even if Jon Snow from Apartment 101 leads the art class every Tuesday, it should just say Resident. In the field next to Service Provided, type in what service was provided. Keep it short, a narrative is not necessary. For example, wellness checks, ice cream social, etc. Reference number 4 for Service Coordination Category Instructions. Next to Source of Support, there are two options. You must select a primary. Please see Source of Support definitions on page 4 for guidance on which option you should choose. If more than one source was used, choose Secondary in addition to Primary. In the field next to Number of Hours of Service, enter a whole number. You need to round up to the closest hour. For example, if a program ran for one and a half hours, you were reported as two hours. In the field next to number of unduplicated residents served, enter the number of unduplicated residents. Attendance sheets should be kept for each program or activity that takes place at a property. A resident should only be counted once for a program or activity that takes place more than once a year. For example, wellness checks. Next to the outcome of service on resident slash community, select at least one box. More than one can be checked. You can reference page six of the instructions for a list of outcomes. 
After all the data has been entered, select Save Service. Data can be entered and saved throughout the reporting period. When all entries are completed for the year, select Submit Supportive Services Report to PHFA. You can submit between January 1st and January 31st for the previous calendar year. Select Sign Out to Exit, and the back arrow should never be used. We highly encourage service coordinators to not wait until January 31st to complete this report. With that being said, it is very important to understand how to update data in the system. So let's talk about that. Sign into the reporting system using credentials we previously talked about at the top of the page where the property is listed. Choose select for the report you want to work on. There will be more than one property listed if you are responsible for multiple properties. Housing services history will be at the bottom of the screen. The following icons will appear. Click on this icon to view a report. Click on this icon to edit a report. And clicking on this icon will delete a report. Once a report is started, at the next login, it will appear at the bottom of the screen after selecting the property. To add more information to the report, click on Edit and Continue to add services. If the Submit button is clicked prior to completing the report, click on the Edit icon. This will allow you to continue entering information by creating an additional report. Do not click on the Submit button until the report is finalized. Congratulations, you've completed the report. If you ever have questions about your reporting, you can contact your Regional Housing Services representative. Thanks for watching.